Howdy, I'm Michael Gablin. Yeehaw, and I'm Kate Ferdoni. Y'all, welcome back to Arts District from Rocky Mountain PBS. Today's episode is dedicated to the spirit of country music. That's right. As we'll see in a minute, some folks live and die by country music, but what exactly is country? Kate, that's a great question. Arts District producers Alexis Kakoan and Jeffrey Dallet explored Denver to find out the pulse of the country music scene. And to learn from the experts themselves what makes country, country. I like country music just because it's relatable to me. There are people that get heartbroken. There are people that go through struggles every day, rely on God. You're telling a story, so it's like somebody's done this or you can relate to it in that way. I grew up with country music. I've loved it forever. Country tells stories. Um, some things that most other music doesn't do. And, and I think as long as you're telling stories with that three chords in the truth mantra, that's country music. You go back to the old thing, three chords in the truth, they always told a great story. They'll talk about heartbreak. They'll talk about vices that they have. They'll talk about maybe relationships that have gone wrong. Heartbreak, you know, and, and drinking, and <laughs> all, those, all those family values that we like so much. I think the real country music of why I'd always related to was kind of like, yeah, my life kind of sucks, and here's a song about it. You know, that, that guy's talking to, he's reading my mail, you know. I think it hit home to a lot of people. I think everybody heard country music at some point in their life, and it, it takes them back to a time. I think country has the capacity to make you maybe feel a little deeper than, than, other, than other forms of music. Ain't the morning light pretty? I, I just prefer that you did what we just went over. As I, I can go ahead and stick something in there after that. Because I want your voice to shine on the top of this thing. Today we are cutting harmonies, and I had my, my good friend Mary Huckins from Dakota Blonde come in to add harmonies to a great tune called Early, which is the story of a little tiny town in Iowa, Early, Iowa. All right with me. All right with me, with me. So you're going, all right with me. Because I'm doing all right with me. With me. Yeah. yeah, there it is. That's it. All right, here we go. My home on the range. It's a one <laughs> She nailed it. But it's all right with me. Country music is different in a lot of ways than other types of music, even though it is so closely related. Country and, and jazz and Dixieland, they have the same starting point that began with, with African slaves, that began with the folks in the north doing minstrel music. And it all, it all mixed and then it just grew and it became more about home and family. I think the fiddles and the steel really put the signature country stamp to it. When you catch that out of the corner of your ear, you know it's gonna be a country record. Our state and our city, especially here in Denver, has had such a great relationship with country music for so long. I moved here in 1976, and that sort of 70s thing, there was a huge country music scene here. There was a whole uh, network of clubs in town that had house bands that played six nights a week, same band every week, and they were all just stellar, killer players. I think in Colorado, it's a really different genre than it might be around the rest of the country because of the western connection that's involved. The Nashville cats sing about cowboys but they don't really know any. I just think when you look outside, you know, and you see the landscape of this state, there's no other place like it. There is not a time that we are not visiting with a country artist and we say, hey, you know, we're tracing a guy from KYGO Denver. I love Denver. Everybody says that. Denver is a great spot for everybody to stop through on their tours. I love hanging out like at the Grizzly Rose and you know I mean that's such a fun place to be and just walking around looking at all the pictures and the history. The country music scene to me is the Grizzly Rose. They come in and they have a good time and I think that's what country music allows people to do is just enjoy themselves. <laughs> Country 
music does not mean you have to have on a cowboy hat and a pair of Wranglers and be able to ride a horse or ride a bull or a rope a calf. Sometimes sure, there's the, you know, I lost my dog, I lost my girlfriend kind of music. Uh, but for the most part, it's fun, it's upbeat. I feel like there is an unwillingness sometimes to strip away the stereotype that they have, where they go, every song's about a dog, or every song's about the truck, or whatever it may be. Well, no, it's not. I think I would say, you, you have to give it a shot, and you have to find artists that are telling your story. If you're saying it's not real country music because somebody's a little too top 40, then there's gonna be artists out there that you might relate to a little bit more. I think when we talk about subgenres of country, there are they're countless. And there's new country, honky tonk, old country, soul, classic country, hardcore traditionalist, western, bluegrass. It's the same music. With every music format, there becomes you know trends that happen, and whether it's like the bro country or whether now it's starting to lean a little bit more even traditional sounds. It's actually a good balance for us right now. Denver is number one for new country, 98.5 KYGO. Good morning. It is Tracy and Guy. My final day of July today, getting up to about 90. Guy, this was a bit of a shocking story yesterday. Apparently, uh, Siri is recording us doing like, doing like everything. Yes. Like confirmed. Yes, especially those Shakespearean uh -huh. moments we have in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you call them Shakespearean moments? Yeah, those beautiful poetic know, moments. You know what? <laughs> we, we have different moments because I would call mine like Chewbacca moments. <laughs> Shakespearean is very bold of you on this show. We love waking up Denver every morning and it's really flattering to have that. You want to make people laugh because everyone's heading to work and they're dropping their kids off at daycare or at school. They've got to get some more on time. They've got a meeting. So our job really is to put people in a place of relaxation, having a little bit of fun and having them go, oh, that me, like I agree, that happened to me too. Anytime you're interviewing anybody in country music, you have to have a natural curiosity to, to ask questions. Did you always <laughs> want to be a musician, Matthew, or what did you want to be in school when you grew up? Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, from an early age, wanted to be a musician. Um, I, I was like in the like fifth grade talent show singing and singing like a Rich Mark song and then that was Matt Ramsey. He's a lead singer of Old Dominion. And so we went into, like, we found out he was in a talent show when he was in fifth grade and what song he sang in fifth grade. Did you sing Right Here Waiting for You in your fifth grade talent show? I did. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> How many girlfriends did you have after that? Oh my gosh, did the girls fall in love with you when they heard you sang that song? You know, and you could see when, when we do an interview like that, they really do open up. People do either hate or, or love country music. I think a lot of people look down on it because it is so simple. Four decades in the studio, I've recorded any, every kind of music you could ever imagine. I still think country music is the hardest music to play. One of my most favorite bass players in the world plays on everything. He'll tell you a country ballad is the most terrifying thing to play in the studio because of the simplicity of it. That's the only thing I think that can bother me a little is when that wall goes up and they don't give country music a chance because I think if they found somebody that they related to, they would really love it. A club owner, when I was doing a, a show, at one point with a group, a, it was a Christmas show, and I came in, I did a couple songs, and she got on stage and she said, I absolutely love your voice, I love what you're doing, please tell me it's not country. <laughs> so I said, uh, no, that's, that's country, <laughs> that's what it is. So I think there is just this wall that has been put up that they think they don't like it from way back in the day, but when you go way back in the day, all those songs are not about trucks and dogs, you know? There's some brilliant lyrics that are out there. You go back to the old thing, three chords and the truth. The biggest thing about country music, it, the, the songs were always about real life. What do you think about country music, Kate? It's all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love country music. Everything from Hank Williams and Loretta Lynn to artists I grew up with in the 90s, like Garth Brooks. Oh, I love me some Garth Brooks, too. And I love that country music lyrics have, like, a, the everyday life vibe. And hey, you can enjoy everything country music by watching Ken Burns' documentary series via our RMPBS Passport. <laughs>